This is English shorthand dictation number 202 and the dictation speed is 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. Sir, there are several standing committees attached to the different departments, but there is no standing committee of this house which numbers only three. Now, what can be the reason for the small number of members elected by this house? Either the labor department is not an important department or it may be due to the fact that the standing committee is never called or called very rarely to discuss any matter. I should like to have information on either of these two subjects. Is the labor department an important department? I find that it is in charge of a very eminent person like Dr. Ambedkar. Even if it was an unimportant department before, it should cease to be an unimportant department at the present day, at least so long as he is in control of the subject. But if it is to be an important department, the standing committee should consist of a much larger number of persons. Look at the standing finance committee, look at the standing finance committee for railways and look at the public accounts committee. The number of members of any of these committees is much larger than three. I am told that this committee does not meet very often. I do not know whether it is a fact and that even when it meets, not much business is placed before this committee. If that be so, I am afraid the utility of the committee will be greatly diminished. I therefore appeal to the government to increase the number of members to eight. I understand that two members are selected from the other place. I suggest that eight members should be elected by this house. If you like, you may increase the number of members given to the other house. Sir, I am very glad to notice that this motion of mine has excited so much interest from the house. The number three as I understand, is based neither on the importance nor on any other consideration, but I am told that it is a standard number and that if there are any enlargements or deviations from the standard number, they constitute only an exception and not the rule. Now, sir, with regard to the point raised by my honorable friend that the reason why the number was fixed at three is because the department pays scant courtesy to this committee. It is not borne out by facts. The House will notice that last year there were two meetings of this committee held and some very important business was placed before the committee. For instance, at the two meetings that were held last year, the subject matter that was placed before the committee included the conclusions of the Labour Conference, report of the Technical Training Inquiry Committee, scheme for the training of skilled artisans and accommodation in Delhi. This year, one meeting was held and the business placed before the committee included conclusions of the second conference of labor ministers and progress made with the technical training under the training scheme. Then the next meeting was held and there was also an adjourned meeting held subsequently. The proceedings of the third conference of labor ministers, the summary of the views of the employers and workers representatives on certain subjects, building program in Delhi and Shimla, proposals relating to the recognition of trade unions and progress made with the technical training under the training scheme were the subjects that were placed before the meeting of the committee. 
I am sure nobody can say that the department has not been placing before the committee matters which are of importance and interest to labor. Then the other thing I would like to submit to the House is that this is not the only committee to advise the Labor Department. Besides this, we have now instituted a plenary conference which consists of representatives of the central government, provincial governments and also of the Indian states. The representatives of employers and of labor are also represented on the plenary conference on a very extensive scale. There is no case for so large an increase asked for by the honorable member. In addition to that, we have also got the Standing Labor Advisory Committee. Having regard to the circumstances, I hold the view that if there was any case for the enlargement of the personnel of the committee, that case has considerably suffered by reason of the constitution of the plenary conference as well as by the standing labor committee. However, if my honorable friend is anxious that the personnel of this committee should be increased, I am prepared to increase the number to eight and I hope this will satisfy my honorable friends in this house. Sir, in view of the observations made by my honorable friend, it is only proper that I should rise to state the position of government on the points that he has made. In a certain sense, the remarks of Mr. Joshi might appear to be irrelevant. We are discussing the Tea Control Act and obviously any provisions dealing with conditions of labor would be entirely out of place therein. But looking at it from a larger point of view, it must be admitted that when the state is asked to suspend the laws of supply and demand with regard to any industry, it is fair that those who are interested in labor should ask that their interests should be protected. It is from this point of view that I say that a reply from the government is necessary. Sir, the first point which Mr. Joshi made was that it is now more than 12 years since the Royal Commission on Labor reported and that the government of India has practically done nothing with regard to the recommendations of that commission. Sir, I agree that 12 years is a long period for any government to take in order to deal with the recommendations made by a royal commission which was appointed to investigate into this matter. But I think on the facts which I propose to refer to in the brief remarks that I am making, the House will also realize that much serious blame would not be laid at the door of the Government of India. As the Honorable Member will remember, the Royal Commission on Labor made five recommendations with regard to the tea plantation. The first recommendation was that the Assam Labor and Emigration Act should be repealed and another act permitting much greater fluidity to the labor should be enacted. The second recommendation was to establish a wage board for fixing the wages of laborers there. The third recommendation dealt with the appointment of a board of health for the welfare of labor in convenient areas with power to make regulations relating to the drinking water, sanitation, drainage, medical facilities and housing. The fourth recommendation was that provisions relating to the regular and prompt payment of wages and deductions to be made for advances made to labor should be applied to plantation labor. The last recommendation was that provision should be made in order that access to public should be provided to gardens. 
now when the recommendations were made it is important to bear in mind that the government of india without loss of time examined these recommendations in order to find out which was the proper authority to deal with them